San Diego and I just wanted to introduce Kyle Corbett. We're on Kyle's boat today and we are gonna get a fantastic tour. I'm pretty excited about this. This is a great vessel with a lot of history. And this is Seas Life. We're an ocean conservation and research uh, sailboat. We are an expedition schooner. She's 81,000 pounds steel vessel. She's an expedition yacht made to go around the world and into any different part of the world's oceans. And we bought this boat and restored it about two and a half years ago in order to tell people about what's going on with ocean pollution and plastics, which you can check out at Seas Life, S-E-A-S-L-Y-F-E.com and on our Instagram channel. You can also check out uh, our main cause, which is Reduce Impact. Reduceimpact.org is where you'll find a lot of that information. And about, you know, two and a half, three years ago, I talked to my whole team of sailors. At that point, we had about 13 employees. Uh, we still got a little, little more than half of that after COVID, but you know, we're on a skeleton crew, we're doing good. And uh, with 13 employees, we all sat down around the table and we kind of talked about what do we want to do with the company's budget in our next move as San Diego Sailing Tours. We've come become predominantly the largest sailing organization brand in San Diego mm -hmm. and in SoCal for the most part through digital marketing and, and pushing our cause and mostly just pushing passion right. and people right. working together. And everyone agreed that the one thing that we see all the time is more plastic on the ocean than we've ever seen before on our whale watching tours. Oh. Every year there's more and more and more. It's horrible. So we decided instead of buying a big tourism boat, which this boat very well could be a large tourism, you know, tourism traffic sure. boat to buy a boat that we could produce an ocean conservation cause for nice. and this boat became our ocean conservation front where we tell people about what's going on between human beings and the ocean mm -hmm. and uh, you'll see this vessel is a 70 foot long she's a Harris 63 63 feet on deck and she is solid steel um she was actually custom made by a gentleman uh, in the 90s uh -huh. uh, she's in 1998 he had her built throughout the 90s and completely custom made. Every single thing you see on this entire boat is custom. Wow. Uh, the intricacy of what he's gone through, it, it blows my mind. Now, why did he build her? Just, do you know? Uh, he built her to sail around the world okay. uh, and to go out and explore. Uh, unfortunately, this gentleman uh, took a little longer than he expected to to build it. Which and sometimes happens though. We locked into a vessel that was not fully finished when we bought it. Oh, okay. The interior wasn't fully finished out. Uh, the exterior was a little bit rough in paint and everything. It looked okay. They'd kind of put it together as best they could. Right. But the boat basically wasn't completely finished. Okay. What I've done with my team is we restore boats from the 60s and 70s for a living mm -hmm. uh, at San Diego Sailing Tours. All of our yachts are from about a half a century ago. So we utilize all that same skill and those uh, kind of same trades, tools, materials, supplies to rebuild the entirety of this boat, interior and exterior, right. uh, to make her a beautiful, comfortable yacht like awesome. she sits now. Nice. Now, how is she rigged? Um, so she is rigged with uh, two masts you'll see here. She's a traditional schooner. Mm -hmm. She's got a huge, I can't wait to show you guys the bilge. It's a humongous area. Awesome. It looks like a shipping. You could imagine putting crates of tea or coffee or right, tobacco right. or rum down there. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so you'll see we've got the two main masts here, which uh -huh. you can run a mainsail up both. Right. We've got it rigged for two stabilizers. So you've got a stay sail here and a stay sail here. Right. That'll keep the boat nice and, and stabilized. Sure. She's what they call a stay sail schooner. So you'll see she has these tracks here mm -hmm. where this guy will slide back and forth. So it's almost self-tacking. Exactly. So it rides by itself. You don't have to constantly adjust the boat. Right. As we ride across the sea, this is going to slide from one side to the other and just kind of readjust itself over and over again, which means once we've set it, there's very, very little adjustment we do. The boat pretty much rides on its own. We set the course of wind shut the diesel off and just let the thing glide and you can walk up and down the rail in 10 foot seas. Oh, you gotta love that. You gotta love that. And then uh, this is one of my favorite parts up here on the bow. I'll show you guys this. Up on this bow, we have a 10 foot long teak bow plate where 
The, this whole area is absolutely amazing for watching dolphins. If we hang out up here, we chill on here, we lay on, lay on here and watch dolphins jump below us. Sometimes I'll lay up here and read a book and just lay on my back, oh, yeah. looking up at the sails. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, one of the coolest things about the entire boat is this whole bow, the, the bow pulpit here. Yeah. And then I love jumping off of it. I'll stand up on top of here right. and do a giant dive 15 feet down into the ocean. Nice. Yeah, you're definitely high up up here for sure. Definitely. And we just redid all the all the teak here too. Oh, look at that one getting tossed. <laughs> so we're midship. And I just wanted to, what, what, I'm so curious, what does she ride like? Like, I mean, because I'm, I can't I'm even slow, tell you what it's slow like. Slow is snot, um, but I'm thinking smooth. Is that accurate or no? I have to say no. I thought it would be slow. This thing flies. Uh, she's very narrow in beam for her length. And the way Harishoff had designed this particular model, she flies across the sea. She's meant to ship items to another part of the world as fast as humanly possible. Okay. So she moves super fast, but the craziest thing is that she rides super, super stable. You can walk up and down the rail and you're barely moving. The one thing that freaked me out the most, mm -hmm. we were taking the boat from Oxnard uh, over to Ventura. And as we're going from Oxnard to Ventura, there's about eight to 10 foot seas. Sure. And we had probably about 15 to 20 knot winds. We figured, Forget it! You know, we're on Sea's Life. This right. thing can handle anything and hammer through it all. Sure. So we get out there and we're going. I step out of the cockpit and I step in to a few inches of water and I'm like, oh shit, what's going on? Is the boat sinking? What is this? And then I realize, oh no, it's a ship. She's got scuppers all on, yep. just like all the other big fishing boats, big steel craft you've seen. Yep. She's set up to take water on and displace it out fast. Right. So you notice this one has a little bit of a higher rise to it. Water will come in here and water will come over the rails. And all of these are right at flush deck mount. So all of these hose pipes just allow water to flow off of the boat. So she'll take water on and off like it's yep. nothing. It's a wet deck. Wet deck, hammering through the sea. You can barely feel that she's jumping up and down. We're on a normal boat, you'd be pitching back and forth and bouncing. Right. But um, it, it's really neat to see how this one rides because it, yeah, I it's, bet, I bet. It's different. So, so I'm glad you, you you cleared that up for me. So, but she's got to be smooth out there, right? Oh, she's smooth. She's really smooth, and you're all in one course. She weighs a lot, so we're not turning fast. Right. We're not like a race boat going through one turn to another and adjusting course a lot. We're cruising on that course and we're just like a freight train going across the sea. Does she heal over much? Uh, with good wind, she does actually, when we have all the sails up. Sure, sure. If we're motor sailing with just our main and our stabilizers up, uh, she doesn't heal a super whole ton. I would you know? think so, yeah. Maybe seven what's her, to what's 10 her degrees. Draft, do you know? Uh, seven. Oh, okay. uh, seven feet. Not okay. super huge, uh, no, but it's no, a full they keel. They still get in tight to places. Yeah, though, yeah. It's nice, you know what I mean? Yeah, we can pull into a lot of anchorages and, and a lot of different docking areas that I wouldn't think we'd be able to, because right. she's not super deep. She's right. full all the way through. Is she? Yeah, one of the things I've been learning to do is every time we go to Catalina, uh -huh. I, I swim underneath her and I go back and forth this side. One of my biggest challenges last year has been going from the stern, taking a big old deep oh, breath, man. going down eight, ten feet below the surface, and all the way forward past how, the bow. How awesome. So I can turn around and pop up and see your dolphin striker right there. That's awesome. Very cool. All right, let's move to the cockpit. So we're in the cockpit area. Um, yes, sir. The question I had off camera for Kyle was, uh, I asked him if this is considered a center cockpit vessel, because She's a big girl. She's she's really big, and I know we take it for granted when we when we see 30, 40 foot uh, sailboats. It's obvious they're center cockpits. Um, I noticed it does have an aft cabin, and I did confirm it with him. But then it, it struck me. I'm like, you know, do we call this a, a center cockpit? And the answer? It's a good question. My, my favorite story that I immediately thought back to is, is my former girlfriend, who would always say, "Hey, I'll meet you over in the pit," uh, and I never understood. And then one day I was like, "Hey, wait a minute." Do you not like saying cock? And she said, I hate the word. <laughs> and so we call it the pit. So it's oh, not necessarily sorry. a cockpit like your traditional boats that should right. be up in the front uh, or up in the center like a center sure. cockpit sure. or back in the stern. Um, but we um, honestly typically call it the pit and um, it is kind of a, a non-traditional rig. And right. being that it's such a large boat, it sits 
almost in the center of the boat, but obviously the center of the boat would be way up that way. So sure, sure. Um, we do have the aft cabin over here. Great visibility though. Oh, dude, I love it. I mean, you're, you're definitely up, up higher. I don't feel like I'm on a bridge, but, but I'm definitely up higher than I would have anticipated. So I, I like that for sure. So uh, it's got some cool stuff though. We've got a lot of space in here and we've got the big uh, navigation area here, our whole binnacle. Uh, we got our autopilot controls. We got our, my two favorite parts, the two big steel balls. Um, but the boat didn't have this when I first got it. Uh, the okay. boat had only a really rudimentary compass. Oh, and okay. so when uh, we were out at sea, we figured out um, the hard way that the compass didn't work. Um, so we were doing trips, we about eight trips before going south of the border uh, and beginning our, um, our research trips down, down below uh, in Mexico that we would cruise up and down the coast and we would be off a little ways sometimes. The compass would kind of constantly be moving. So one time we're going from Channel Islands and we're going down towards San Diego. Right. And I had my crew member Charlie, Captain Charlie was at the helm. He's driving for a while. Then it was my turn. And, uh, and so my, I, I come up and it's myself and one or two crew members in, in the cockpit and I'm, I'm on the helm. We didn't even have autopilot on the boat yet at that time. We do now. Uh, but I'm driving. I'm like, I got this. Yeah, we're just going straight for San Diego. Turns out the compass would turn itself back toward north. We had no freaking clue. The oh, compass, no. the magnet on the compass was off and it's a steel ship. So you need the two steel balls on a steel ship right. to, to offset your compass and keep it calibrated right. Sure, sure. And so what happened was we ended up turning around and by the time oh. we checked the telephone or a uh, Navionics on right. a cell phone, right. or we have an iPad usually on board that we use for it. Sure. Uh, we do have a nice daddy, like super awesome chart bottom we put on Simrad since then. Yeah. I was driving for six hours the wrong direction oh, oh uh, and didn't want to tell Charlie either. So when Charlie came out, he was like, how are we doing? I was like, you know, almost seven hours from destination. He's like, scratches his head for a minute. I go, don't figure it out. Don't figure it out. And he looks up and goes, I went to bed and we were five hours from destination. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great story. And, and so I, I've been on the water. <laughs> Uh, a little bit, and I call it the rule of fives. Five degrees for five hours, you're off chart, you're off course five miles. I like that. Five, hey. five, five. And that's, that's whenever I'm, you know, if we go on long fishing ranges or whatever, I always check the compass to the chart plot. Yeah, people don't everything. realize how five, big of five, a difference five. it makes. Five degrees, five hours, five miles. And five miles is a lot. A lot on the a sea. Lot. It takes a lot of time to get back from I that. I mean, yeah. Think of it as at night and you're five degrees, for five hours, you're five miles off and you hit an island. Like, I mean, just like this island wasn't supposed to be there because we're supposed to be five miles from there. So that's that's my rule of fives. That's, I like that's the rule of fives a lot. That's pretty yeah. slick. Yeah, rules of five. Anything else you want to point out? Uh, not five? particularly. Um, we got our big, big steel balls. We've got our big, beautiful helm. This came with the boat. This thing is a 14 turn helm. You turn it 14 times in one direction before it will hit the other side. Wow. It's absolutely insane. Wow. Uh, I've never been on a boat like it. Uh, each of our 36s that we charter are, you know, a couple turns each direction. Sure. This but thing how just goes nice and goes. So just... finely tuned, right? And the rudder underneath is just turning slowly slow to the side. So nice. Like, I mean, we're not in a performance racing boat. So exactly. You don't want that whip. You don't want that. You want to be able just to be like nice, minute degree change. Exactly. And that's what this helps a lot for on the Simrad here. When you take this little cover plate off, we have a rudder indicator and it shows me how many degrees the rudder is over to starboard sure. or to port. And it moves very slowly and we can see how far it's gone over each way. And that tells me when I'm docking, when I'm bringing in Absolutely. and out of harbors, exactly where I'm at. And I'm watching that at all times to see how far over it is. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're doing a three point turn or pivoting the boat, that tells us all the information you can't feel it with the helm it's just no and you don't big. know you have no idea so so where he's talking about the position of the rudder and again one of my simple little things in my mind is anything over 35 feet you need a rudder indicator that, that's essentially what it is uh, a lot of times on sailing uh, or power you'll see they'll mark the helm wheel with a knot a bolo knot or some special yeah knot. we got it right there yeah blue tape yeah but the problem is is you don't know how many times that's been turned uh -huh. the direction. <laughs> so if you're getting ready to leave, you know, 
you're, you're in a dock or whatever, you're getting ready to leave that or whatever the case is, your rudder indicator will tell you right how many degrees out your rudder is so you can straighten her back out. So it's until you backed into a boat or slid into something, it's not important. And then, it becomes, <laughs> and then it becomes pretty important. Yeah, very. All right, let's move downstairs. Let's do it. So we're down in the salon. Tell me, let's start with the engine. What do we have for power? Uh, Ford Lehman 120 diesel, mm -hmm. inline six cylinder powerhouse. Yeah, they're great engines. Uh, high hours, mid hours, low hours. Super low. The boat was pretty much not used before we bought it. It sat in shore and never went anywhere until we bought it. We've done about 15 trips up and down the, the coast, like I was telling you guys earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and been in and out of Mexico, Catalina, Channel Islands, Guadalupe Island with all the white sharks. Sure. Ensenada, Punta Cabras, uh, San Diego, Oxnard, Ventura. And, up and down the coast, but just with us the last couple of years. So wow. still super, super low hours. What a jewel. Um, we did take a look at the bilges. The bilges are in great shape. I love the diesel tanks on board. The hatches, you can undo them. Yeah, they're That's integral to the of, ship, yeah. Can, like, they're part of them. Yeah, right. you can physically climb yep. your entire human yep. body inside of them. Can Which you I, stand full like, height? Or? No, no, not full but height, but, but, but the hatch height. is probably three feet by three feet. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're humongous. As we go down below this floor, she's made as a traditional schooner, so you mm -hmm. have tons of space. I've kept surfboards, plural, and bicycles, plural, right. uh, down there at different times during voyages, uh, yeah. going from one so place awesome. to another. Still boat don't have differences in other boats, or there's some differences the construction of a steel I mean, boat is traditionally similar, um, but because steel offers a greater strength, they can put bulkheads farther apart, this and that. Am I right or wrong? Exactly, yeah. So we have a ton of strength, and we also don't need to put different tanks into different areas where we'd have a stainless steel or a plastic tank in different areas. Mm -hmm. It's actually integral to the hull. So they build it into the design of the boat where we have humongous uh, tanks for water and for diesel fuel, a thousand gallons of, of, of either one wow. available at our disposal at any time. So there's multiple deck fills on the outside. I've been using the same water right now. I've been on this boat in this anchorage for over two months and I have not run out of water. And I brush my teeth, I shower, I've got a uh, hot water heater down below, a brand new rare can on board this boat right now that we just put in for uh, during COVID and um, wash all my dishes, everything, just running wow. all the time. And a wet head, so it's got a, you know, a pumpable, you press the button and it fills with water and drains out when you press the button again. Nice, nice. nice. Very nice. So you have the settee, it's a traditional U-shaped settee. Yeah, and we had a big table here when we first bought the boat. We got rid of the table to free up some space and made it a lot more comfortable like for it. us to sit down, relax, you know, you can kick back and. Then we have, uh, moving forward, we have the galley. Um, yeah, oh, uh, don't forget about this area here. Oh, this is yeah, probably oh, my most sorry. proud area. Now the paint we did here, you can see a little bit tarnished because it didn't come out. We mixed the two part paint wrong on that one. But this whole area didn't exist when we bought the boat. Uh, one of the reasons uh, I was able to procure this vessel, uh, not being a multi-millionaire, was because this area was not built this way. It had rudimentary rough wood and an old school TV type, mm -hmm. um, like inset where you had like a big box TV. Right. That dry rot here that had come down and you could put your hand through a couple parts of the wall. We ripped out everything you see on the starboard side and the port side entirely, put in brand new framing uh, around for each of the port lights, marine plywood on the inside, and then FRP, this is a fiberglass reinforced plastic type deal. It's like what you'd find on the inside of your shower. It's bathroom shower with them in it basically. Mm -hmm. And then covered it with this. So it's completely rebuilt, and then they re completely rebuilt this area by building a big desk. The scientists we had on board, I thought that they would need beakers and test tubes sure, and a whole sure. science area to do all their research right. with. They didn't need any of that. They didn't want any of that. All they needed was an area to set their laptop down and sit there and work. Wow. And so we built wow. this with a big, nice desk, which works for me as well. Yeah, absolutely. I usually you work for my laptop as a there. digital nomad. And, Heck yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, aft cabin. Tell me about the aft cabin. Ah, uh, the aft cabin. My favorite spot of the boat. This is my home. Okay. Uh, you guys want to walk back there? Yeah, yeah, you bet. I didn't mean to cut you off from the galley there. I was just so excited about uh, showing you what we've done. So this is the whole aft cabin zone here. Got a queen size bed. Uh, it's got some pretty cool things that were put onto the boat uh, in advance of, of our purchasing it. 
Um, these countertops actually have fossils inlaid into them. Um, see our cool Seas Life brand that we, we got going, we got the boat all set up. Um, but yeah, there's actually fossils laid into each of these uh, these areas. I didn't know what they were. A friend of mine came on the boat. She had traveled at sea for 14 years and um, she knew of it because I guess you find them on uh, big exquisite like mega yachts and really expensive vessels. And they have actual inlaid uh, countertops that are imported from somewhere with fossils in them, real fossils. Very cool. Very cool. I had no idea I had fossils. Like Cheers, yeah, I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's, it's cozy. Then we've got all the custom woodwork here, custom made uh, the cabinets and all the pull out drawers. This area over here was a storage zone that we have built 90% of out. It uh, didn't finish entirely. Um, it's got cedar lining the entire uh, walls now. It was all just rough wood when we bought it. So I put FRP on the bottom and then I put cedar up top. So then we got the granite countertop there to put in a sink and we built out some of what's going to be a. a cabinet top. That's the one area that we haven't completely finished or decided what we want to do with with the boat. Right. There are drop-in refrigerator freezers. So you turn it on and it goes from cool to refrigerator all the way up to a full-blown freezer. Nice. And it gives you the exact Celsius rating of um, of what it's cooling things at. Mm -hmm. This is how we were able to preserve and deliver um, the blubber and skin cell samples from the endangered whales back to shore. So we would preserve them inside of these and then sail them back to, uh, to Ensenada. Oh, nice. And we can keep them at the exact Celsius temperature we want so the scientists can have them preserved just properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That's and then so cool. we have galley to the port. Indeed, yep. Uh, you got my dishes out still here that I was, uh, I was doing. Mac and cheese, of course, the mac and cheese dinner. I like it. Um, nice storage. <laughs> cheers, it's got a lot of storage. Uh, and we have nice granite countertops, uh, beautiful wood trim. A lot of this wasn't done. We finished a lot of this wood trim ourselves. We added in this entire thing, including bunging all the different parts of the of it and installing this whole countertop area that wasn't here. So when we got the boat, it was very rough and raw. and. Um, uh, that was why I was able to, to procure the vessel and then drop about a quarter million dollars into the restoration of making her how she is now um, over these last two and a half years. Um, one piece at a time. This is our three burner stove and oven. It's got a nice uh, yep, gimbaled uh, oven and, and stove there. All the time. Yeah, we cook on board a lot. All of our voyages we have. Uh, Angel is actually, she's our main onboard cook. She's always down here in the what galley. You get a good cook. You're like, done? Dude, she's on every single trip and she's there in a heartbeat, willing to be on the boat as soon as she can. Best crew member on the boat. Oh, dude, she, she hey, show, brings love to the crew. <laughs> She'll keep, well, a, a good cook will keep uh, the crew happy. Very. <laughs> I have to completely agree with that sentiment. Yep. yep. And then moving forward to starboard, we have the head. This is the head here. You've got a wet head with a vacuum flush. We've got the, the buttons to operate that. Kind of a cool sink deal they put in before we got it. Also, oh, they did the And it's got a full size shower as well. And then we also replaced all the pumps for the most part on the boat. We replaced the head pump, uh, the macerator head that chops all the poop up. Uh, and then we also replaced the gulper pump. We put in this fancy whaler uh, gulper pump that sucks all of the the water from in soap and suds from the bottom of the shower out through here and then pumps it out overboard. Nice. Um, that thing helps a ton. It makes it so that we can take a shower and the water never builds up by your feet. You yep. get hair and everything else in there we sucks it all right out. On ours. Oh, you did? Yeah. Absolutely. That's all, yeah. man. How, Game yeah, changer. Wait, how many hours do you spend to maintain the boat? How many hours? Uh, I wouldn't say it's super high maintenance. It's been high in reconstruction. Uh, it depends if you're living on it or if you're just coming to visit the boat. If you're living on the boat, you're gonna do it kind of regularly as you're going through. If you're keeping the boat somewhere, you'll probably hire a team of people that'll help you do a couple different main projects. Mm -hmm. But all in all, with how we've built it out, there's not a lot of maintenance anymore. Keep is relatively easy. Now getting it to where it was like this, the maintenance has been heavy because we've repainted the boat twice. We've redone all the wood on the interior. Every single piece you see here that shines, we've had re-sanded down and re-varnished with high gloss. Um, um, varnishes that uh, we usually use Epiphane, it's an import from Holland. Yep. So the maintenance on the boat was super cumbersome. Now I don't have to do a whole lot. It kind of sits as it does. Um, but then again, it's a boat. So as you guys know, every boat takes a lot of maintenance. Regular maintenance. <laughs> and then to port, we have a cabin. Uh, yeah, to port, we have a smaller cabin. This is the midship cabin here. Um, again, having rebuilt all the, everything inside of here and trimmed everything out. 
Um, this one sleeps too. It's mm -hmm. got a custom, um, custom built dresser there with real seashells in it. It's all hand painted that was uh, put on by one of the previous owners that we just couldn't get ourselves to pull out. It doesn't match the rest of the boat, so I wanted to remove it, but right. I just I couldn't do it. It's just it too pretty. We get so many compliments on it by so many people all the time. You'll notice there's a fan inside of there too. I put these um, these Marine Co fans all throughout the boat that are absolutely amazing. And when you kick these on, I mean, they are... They move some air. They, they really do. I mean, they they really move air. I mean, they just, hmm. they keep us nice and cool on a hot day, that's for sure. And that's important. And then up front, we've got a third drop-in angle, uh, and this angle is the freezer. Okay. So uh, this one I keep as a freezer. You can keep any of them as a freezer if you want. Right. But um, I keep the front one as a freezer here usually, and the other two as refrigerators. You can see all of our cluttered stuff everywhere, yeah, including my right. books and... Uh... It's supposed to be. <laughs> then we got the crew bunks up here. That's right. And uh, these are pretty comfortable. They're actually pretty large. Um, and give a lot of space for the crew to, to chill out and relax. Again, you can see we, we, we trimmed out a lot of this and put a lot of varnish on everything and kind of made everything all beautiful professionally. Uh, we added USB uh, outlets all throughout the vessel. So we've got the ability to charge cell phones. And then up here, I don't know if I have, I have to replace the light in here. The light went out. Um, but if you want to take a light, you can show it. This is one of my favorite parts of the boat when I bought it, uh, is the workshop. And so I'll give you a little light up in here. Um, the workshop is actually pretty amazing. It's got a workbench that we can work on here. It's got storage back up in here. And then it's got additional storage areas back here which lead all the way up to the anchor uh, chain uh, locker where you've got our windlass switch and everything else. Um, but super duper handy. Uh, yeah, being able to work up here, have all of our working equipment. You can see we have a lot of parts and stuff over here as well. The ability to access all of our tools whenever we need to fix anything has been uh, a huge part of the, the amazingness of this boat. It is. Oh yeah. Great level board. I like it. It's definitely comfortable for me. Kyle, I want you to tell me about yourself. All right, I appreciate it, Carl. So my name's Kyle Corbett. You can find me at kylecorbett.com. I'm a stand-up comedian, grew up as a SAG actor, learned that I needed to know the business of acting, so I dove into getting my hands deep and dirty into it with building out a sailing tour company. I restored a 1967 sailboat called Leilani because we were appalled at her original name of Dancing Dolphin. Oh. Found out the original name given to her in 1967 was Leilani as she sailed from California over to Honolulu in nice. the Trans-Pacific Yacht Race. Got just completely wrapped up in this awesome passion of sailing. Mm -hmm. And I became uh, a bit of an entrepreneur that way and this is the way I learned the business of acting. I've got a book coming out soon now uh -huh. and I've kind of made it all work full circle. And oh, you cool. can listen to my podcast which is about inspiration and motivational vibes. Nice. So I give people great things you can take with you every day one minute little pieces of info. They're about the length of a song track. Uh -huh. You can take that piece of info, listen to it on your way to work and have a good vibe to remember to recite throughout the day that'll help you improve your own life. And I mix in some of my own stand-up comedy with it, of oh, course. Cool. And if you're not driving to work because of COVID, you know, which- I drive a 13 foot Boston Wheeler to work. I can't hear anything. But even if you need a break during the day, podcast, you know what I mean? Exactly. Teenagers not doing the schooling like they should or whatever. And you can like, consume them anywhere. You can take right. a podcast with you. We were on a boat the other day and uh, I was talking to the guy and he's like, yeah, you know, I've been working down below doing my bright work, you know, varnishing. I'm like, oh yeah, so we're just talking shop. No big deal. And. He had mentioned something about a book, and I'm like, oh, well, we have a library on our boat, you know, all nautical books, you know, fiction, nonfiction, just think it's cool, you know what I mean? And I said, but I gotta tell you, I haven't been to it in forever. I haven't read, I haven't pulled the book out of there and read it. He's like, he's like, well, there's no time. I'm like, no, I, are you kidding me? I listen to audiobooks like crazy when I'm working. <laughs> like, just plug in and you're, you get lost in this book. It's a blast. Podcast, same thing. I follow a few podcasts for sure. One of my mantras that I've always had, and, after I met Yulia for the first time and we, we got to know each other, she's like, man, you got a lot of energy. I'm like, I'm gonna live 10 lifetimes the time I'm here. That's my goal. I like that. That is absolutely my goal is I'm not gonna slow down. I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna live 10 lives to the fullest and keep pushing for more. I'm gonna be that guy. Like, like I'm not gonna be sorry 
when those when the, the the witching hour comes when the end i'm just gonna be like i'm i'm still pushing that's my favorite statement